Welcome back. As we just saw, making part of making Rochester a place where people choose to live is helping them be safe places. But another challenge for urban areas is economic growth. How much and much rather has been made about the importance of the small business owner in helping to prop up Rochester's economy? The Rochester Institute of Technology is investing in that economy by opening up a location in the heart of downtown Rochester. In October, RIT announced its pledge to start the Center for Urban Entrepreneurship. Here to tell us about it is a woman who knows a lot about the potential in urban areas. Dr. D.T. Ogilvie is the new dean of RIT's E. Philip Saunders College of Business. And we thank you so much for joining us. Us. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. So let's begin with uh, your arrival to Rochester. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, welcome. It's Thank been you. it's been now um, About goodness four three months, months three four, four months. months. Yeah. And uh, you come to us from New Jersey. Yes, I do. Tell us what you were doing in New Jersey prior to your arrival in Rochester. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of parallels. Um, I was the um, founding director of the Center for Urban Entrepreneurship and Economic Development. And that center had an immediate impact on Newark. And it was that right in the center of Newark because the business school. We have uh, Rutgers um, School I was at had three campuses. Mm -hmm. I was on the Newark campus for the center. It was an area with a lot of challenges economically. A lot right? of challenges. The city of Newark is the poorest city, one of the poorest cities in the country. Um, it's been improving since uh, Cory Booker became mayor. And we worked hand in glove with uh, Mayor Booker. But what the center did is uh, put into place several programs that have made a difference, our flagship programs. One program was uh, through some funding we got from a local uh, entrepreneur, real estate mogul, um, helped us to make funds available for small business owners. Mm -hmm. um, and we were able to put funds in a street or a couple of block area, um, Halsey Street, which mm -hmm. was between the Rutgers campus and Broad Street, which is one of the major arteries mm -hmm. in Newark. And by putting funds into those businesses, we created a tipping point that led to a cascade of more businesses coming on that street. So about nine other businesses have come on that street since we started our work there. It, it's that tipping point that Malcolm Gladwell yes. writes about, yes. that you know there has to be some small spark, some small catalyst. Right. In this case, mm -hmm. it was uh, the, the, uh, the generosity, if you will, financial yes. means mm -hmm. of one individual. Right. Sometimes that can make all the difference. And right. much has been made about the partnership you know, uh, uh, that uh, individuals with means can have. Yes. With, with those who don't. Right. Putting those who have and those who do yes. not have together. Yes. Um, but how do you make those introductions? That's yeah. why this Center yeah. for Urban Entrepreneurship uh, is so important, isn't right. it? it was it's a, a central meeting place. Mm -hmm. It was a confluence of events. Um, Paul came to us wanted to do something in Newark. He had a fondness for the city. He remembered how it was when he was growing up. Um, at that point, I was uh, the president, actually, of Rutgers, wanted to uh, increase diversity among the faculty. And so I created a proposal to increase faculty diversity around urban entrepreneurship and economic development. So it was a confluence of events that came together. We had a new dean who was a business person who saw the benefit of what we wanted to do. And so we were able to start the center. We were able to put money on the street, um, not only with the money from this individual, but with local banks, the city of Newark, and, and other friends. Okay. And we were able to um, support these four entrepreneurs. And that was a catalyst that led to that tipping point. The other thing we did, we started a training program for first-generation entrepreneurs. And these were people who had been in business at least two years, had a licensed business, um, had some employees, had some revenues, and had the potential to grow, um, and who were doing business in New Jersey. And that program made a difference because for first-generation entrepreneurs, they didn't have a. They didn't sit around the family table talking about business because right. neither their parents nor grandparents exactly. were business owners. Right. So they didn't learn the tacit knowledge that you gain. Um, if you're, a, you know, a lawyer, you're sitting around with your kids, and you, you know, especially if both parents are lawyers, mm -hmm. and kids absorb a lot of information about the law and how to, you know. My dad was an insur is an insurance agent, okay. and I, you know, as a kid, he mm -hmm. talked to me about all sorts of stuff. Right, right. I didn't get it at the time, but I do now. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is, that's a, you know, having being at your parents, uh, you know, at the table with your parents mm -hmm. and your family members. Mm -hmm. So, so that's a, a, a wealth of information right. you gain from those yes. from those relationships. Looking. At Rochester now, mm -hmm. and from you, you know, I'm always fascinated at how people not from our city, not originally see. from our city, see right. Rochester. Yeah. What do you see in that area of Liberty Pole Way mm -hmm. in downtown Rochester, which has had its share of problems? Right. You know, 
teens loitering, problems, right. you know, with uh, lack of uh, new businesses, right. businesses closing. Okay. Um, what do you see? Um, a lot of problems are typical of any urban area, and that's why um, we started the Center for Urban Entrepreneurship, um, both in the north now here in Rochester. But Rochester has a lot of potential. Uh, there are other cities and a lot of assets other cities don't have. You have a number of displaced executives um, from Kodak, from Xerox, from Bausch & Lomb living in the city. Um, so that means you have a high um, educational level among those people. Um, but you also have the, the people who are in poverty, okay. who need jobs. There, there's that dichotomy, yes. and we're going to stop there, take a break, and come back. I'm fascinated to hear how we can get those two to meet in Great. the middle. We'll be right back. Dr. D.T. Ogilvy, Dean of the E. Philip Saunders College of Business at RIT. She's new to our area, and we last left discussing entrepreneurship. We've yes. got a lot of displaced executives in right. Rochester hungry for their next move. Yes. And a lot of hungry entrepreneurs. Right. Um, a lot of these people want to get into business but don't know how. Um, or they get into business and they don't really know what to do. Um, it's very different working in corporate when you're in a department and a whole support system around you. And when you're the only one, mm -hmm. you're the, your own support. Um, but we can teach them the science of entrepreneurship to help them be more effective. And we've proven that in Newark. Over this, you know, terrible economic period, our EPI, Entrepreneurship Pioneers Initiative members, um, business owners, have increased sales, have increased hiring, and have survived. So there's hope for Rochester. So there is hope for Rochester. And then they can hire, businesses tend to hire locally. So they can hire, we can train these kids, we can train these other people to work in those businesses. And if they hire locally, that'll have an effect on the fortunes of the city. There's a multiply effect because they hire locally, the money stays in the community, it raises the whole community. And that's what the hope is with this Center for yes. Entrepreneurship uh, in downtown Rochester, um, it, it, you know, right near the Liberty Pole there, you know, a troubled area mm -hmm. uh, historically, but this could be the tipping point, like yeah. you said, I love that. This could be the tipping point helping, you know, those young entrepreneurs, people with a good idea. Right. And you know, Rochester idea. has had good ideas for right. decades. But you need more than a good idea. You need to be able to execute that idea and implement it so that you're effectively making it work. That's why you're the dean of the business school. Uh, Dr. Ogilvy, thank you thank very you so much, much for I've taking the time. It. And I think we'll have you back on again. I have so thank many you. points that we can delve into, and we shall. Yeah, I would Thanks like so that. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, and that is it for this uh, week's edition of Many Voices, Many Visions. Of course, you can check us out online at 13wan.com. Look under the community heading, and we'll see you next week right here on Many Voices, Many Visions. Have a great week, everybody.